Here I've got a copy of the Defensive Riser for Adeptus Titanicus, which is coming out on Saturday. So this is, I think, the fourth Titanicus supplement. Titan Death, Shadow of Iron, Shadow of Iron Doom of Molech. Yeah, this is the fourth. So, what's in it? You've got another six Night Houses. You've got another four, no, six Titan Legions, but they've also reprinted Legio Mortis. So that's only five new ones. You've got 22 pages of background, seven narrative missions, but you've also got create a Titan Legion rules. You've got rules for customising your night households. Uh, you've got rules for allegiances, uh, which are very much like factions for the Titan Legions and the night households. You've got three for the Legions, Lawyers, Traitor, Black Shield, and four for the households, Imperialist, Mechanicus, Traitorous, and Oblitus which is basically Black Shield. So for any Titanicus player, there's stuff in here. The allegiances, if you're a Loyalist Legion, you're going to get that Loyalist bonus. Ditto trait, ditto Black Shield. But you've also got a bunch more Legio traits, and you've got all these rules for creating your own Titan Legions. So you've got, as usual, lovely full colour, whole bunch of background pages, and you start seeing Night Majeras, almost as if those are going to come out. But there's more. This is something we haven't seen revealed. We've got all these lovely colour plates for the Titan Legions. But when we get to the Night Households, which are after the Manipoles, which I'll go back to in a minute, we start seeing this sort of thing, Night Majera. So Night Majeras are obviously going to be coming out in plastic, so expect the weapon variations on that same hull, which is going to include the uh, Night Styrix, which I think is the um, Volkite one. See so colour plates for different knights, and then Night Atropos. So these are going to be coming out in plastic as well, and we've not seen these before which is good news. It means there's another couple of night boxes coming out to take the total number of night boxes to six. The question is whether they bring these out with another supplement or we get them before another supplement. So with this supplement, we got these, the HRM Castigator, which were in a previous supplement. I think it was the Titan Death. They had the Night Lancers and those cards also have the rules for the H got Hron and Castigator, and we've only just got the minis for them. So, Knight Atropos, Knight Styrix, uh, Knight Majeras are coming out, which means another couple of boxes of the Mechanicum style knights, which I really like the look of, and it's going to be really interesting to see. But we don't have the rules for them yet. Uh, this book again also references Corrupted Titans. The rules for Corrupted Titans are not in here. So let's go to the Titan Legions. So we've got some new Titan Legions. We've got Legio and Aurum, which are the Death Bolts. Uh, another Loyalist Legion. What have they got that's interesting? They can do some Titan substitutions to put bigger Titans in. And they can add Warbringer Nemesis to Axiom, Myrmidon, and Fortis Maniples. Uh, they've got Crusading Spirit, which is a stratagem. Uh, Bacillus Throne, which is 25 point war gear. Titan with this upgrade may issue orders without a need to make a command check. Any Titan adds one to the result of their command check when issued order previously used by this Titan. Uh -huh. So if this Titan goes on, say, emergency shutdown, any other Titan in its maniple gets plus one on the roll to emergency shutdown, which is really useful in making sure your orders go through if you've got a maniple where you want everything on the same order. Hmm. 
resolute and unbowed. If you move more than four inches in the movement phase of any round, decrease the bonus to the attacker's armor as a result of damage already inflicted on the location by one. Which means if you keep moving, it's tough for them to take you down if you've already taken damage. And you've got a really nice red and black colour scheme with stripes, so people are going to be getting their masking tape out and gold trim. I was actually really surprised not to see any transfer sheets released. We've got a lovely quartered uh, blue and marble white colour scheme here. Let's have a look at the rules for Legio Osidax, the cockatrices. Cockatrices? Cock yeah. That's going to be one that everybody's going to pronounce wrong, especially on the internet and in videos. So, no penalties to command checks may ignore effects that force them to re-roll successful command checks. That's real, real useful. Relentless March is a stratagem. Play the stratagem. Any friendly Legio Ostax Titans may issue full stride without having to make a command check and are not affected by difficult terrain and dangerous terrain. That's pretty useful. Blood begets blood. Play it when a friendly Titan suffers catastrophic damage. Every friendly Legio Ostax Titan may immediately make one weapon attack. Made against the closest visible enemy and you push all the reactors by two. That's, that's high risk, high reward. Plasma channels, uh, once per game. Right, any time, have it for 20 points, once per game in the movement phase. You can activate plasma channels to decrease the reactor level by D3 plus one. And it counts as your activation for that movement phase. So that's really useful if you've got something that's going to push your reactor a lot. And some Princep Traits. Yeah, Princep Traits. But again, you've got some lovely colour panels. Warmongers, Legio Crucius. So, uh, Forgeborn. First and second rounds of the game, when you make a repair roll, uh, re-roll any dice of one. Uh, moderately useful, but you're not necessarily going to be taking a lot of damage in the first two rounds of the game. During the damage repair control phase, when making repair rolls as part of emergency repairs, order when you get a six to vent plasma, decrease your reactor level by two, not one. Again, situational, but also useful. War gear, terminus specific override for 30 points. If you're required to roll on the reactor table, instead of rolling, give the Titan a shutdown order instead. Bifolded containment, plus 30 points. When fire a weapon with draining, a Titan equipped with bifolded power containment rolls a d6 to mitigate the effect on a 4 plus. You can roll the reactor dice twice and choose the result you want on a 1. Roll the dice twice and choose the result that react that pushes your reactor most. If they, if you get something that pushes it by the same amount, you awaken the re, you get the you push yeah you get the one that awakens the machine spirit. So eh, high risk high reward. But yeah, that can really help if you've got a lot of draining things, flaming skulls. Subtract one from all command checks made by Titans within eight inches of a Legio Magna Titan. Titans within eight inches can never re-roll failed command checks, uh, but your friendly Titans, your Legio Magna Titans, are not affected by this trait. Battle Fervor, three-point stratagem. Play it. Anybody can be issued charge orders without needing to make a command check. Uh, and all friendly Legio Magna Titans re-roll hit rolls of one for melee attacks. Spearhead Assault, two-point stratagem. Play during any strategy phase. For the remainder of the round, all the Geomagna Titans add one to hit rolls and armor rolls made against a target within eight inches of the Titan doing the attack. However, enemy Titans add one to any armor rolls they make against you from the side or rear arc in addition to any other mod. There's directed pressure outlet. Melter weapon. Uh, da, 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 adds three inches to the weapon short range. Hmm. And another really nice colour scheme that you're probably going to want to do painting all the armour panels separately and doing with airbrush fades. 
So all the bottom armour panels are fiery orange and the top armour panels are black. So yeah, that is a very striking colour scheme. So at least somebody there has got a good colour scheme. Another really nice black and sort of beigey ivory colour scheme. Uh, for Legio Volturum, the Gore Crows, uh, particularly that's really quite nice and it'll be great seeing uh, the transfer sheet for this. So relentless killers during the combat phase add one to all hit rolls. If an enemy titan has suffered catastrophic there, yeah, if during the same round an enemy titan has suffered catastrophic damage regardless of the source. One point stratagem call the weak. When an enemy tri titan moves outside its front arc, see sidestepping or backing up, whether voluntary or involuntary. A friendly Legio Volturum Titan can immediately make an attack with one of their weapon systems against the target, increasing their reactor by one. Uh, scent of Blood. So if, if the enemy start retreating or start trying to get out of the way, you can spend one point to activate the stratagem and hit them with something. Set them, yeah, scent of Blood. Stratagem purchased by any Volturum player. Play this when an enemy's Titan suffers critical damage in the combat phase as a result of damage from an attack made by a friendly Legio Volturum Titan. After the attacking Titan's activation has ended, you may immediately activate another friendly Legio Volturum Titan that hasn't yet been activated this combat phase, pushing the reactor by two, uh, and that activation counts as the activation for that Titan. So you can chain your activations to hit something really hard and then activate something else and hit it hard again. Storm frag shells and your Vulcan Megabolter. Uh, 25 points for a Megabolter, 45 points for an array. Gets the maximal fire trait and increased negative accuracy modifier for the range for long range by one. So okay. Again, it's a really nice colour scheme. And Legio Mortis the Death's Heads. I would need to check against the original Titan Death Supplement to see how much this has changed. You've still got War Master's Beneficence, it's still 20 points. You can pay 20 points to take one off enemy leadership within 8 inches of a Titan. So I must agree, uh, increase their command characteristic by 1 to a maximum of 10. You've still got March of the Dead, you've still got State of Decay, and you've still got Reaper's Tally. So I'd need to check and see if there's anything different there. But again, you've got some lovely colour plates. And now we get onto the maniples. So there are four maniples in this supplement. Three of them are new, one of them is a reprint, I believe, from White Dwarf. So Perpetua Battle Line. Warlord and two Reavers with two optional Reavers and the trait is Stand Firm. Emergency repairs orders to the Titan's command check is a 2 plus regardless of modifiers. In the damage control phase, Titans from this maniple roll an extra repair dice if they didn't move this round, voluntarily or involuntarily. So that can help keep you in the fight and keep you going. Uh, and it does help with repairs. I think I'm trying to think if we actually have any defensive players playing Titanicus. We might, and they might go for something like this. Whereas the offensive players will go for an Exterg Extergimus Battle Line Maniple, which is three Warlords with an optional extra Warlord and uh, optional Warbringer. So uh, during the combat phase, when you make an attack with a weapon without melee, you may increase the strength of that weapon by 2 for the duration of the attack. You've got to declare it, and it pushes your reactor level by 1. So this is going to be things... Because it doesn't specify that it's got to be an energy weapon. So Vulcan Megabolter Arrays jump by 2 strength. Apocalypse Missile Arrays jump by 2 strength. Your laser batteries jump by 2 strength. Your plasma jumps by 2 strength. You can do quite a lot with that. Uh, that's very aggressive, but you've got a minimum buy-in of three Warlords, which is going to be 1,700 points-ish. 
So I know there's a whole bunch of Horus Heresy players out there who would very much like to play 10,000 point games. You will see this in those sort of games. Firmus Light Maniple. Let's see if I can get it so that the... there's not so much reflection on the page. So, this is another Light Maniple. Starts with a Reaver and two Warhounds. And you can have two additional optional Reavers. Bear in mind you can always do your Titan swapping with some of your Legios. There's one earlier that can swap Warbringers in. Uh, there's another one that can swap uh, Reavers for Warlords. But the benefit of this uh, Maniple is you can, when a Titan gets targeted, you can say you've got to target a closer Titan in the same Maniple that is in less than 50% of cover. And if you don't want to target that Titan and want to hit your original target, you've got to pass command check. It means you can divert shooting onto something closer and have a sacrificial Titan. Again, it's a very defensive Maniple. So versus a Fortis or something like that, I'd pick a Fortis every time. But I'm an aggressive player. And then you've got the Dominus. So Warlord, two Reaver, um, one Knight Banner with optional, two Warhounds and another Knight Banner. So the Knights are there for screening. Uh, if you've got a Knight Banner within six inches, uh, wholly within six inches of a Titan from the same Maniple, then it's minus one to hit either the Knights or the Titan. Ooh, nope. It's minus one to hit the knight, sorry, to hit the titan. Noble Sacrifice. You can take a hit originating from more than two inches away, transfer it to any knight model in the same manner within six inches, as long as that model is visible to the attacker. And you do it before you do the armor rolls. Chosen knight suffers the full effect of the hit, and if it's a blast, you center the blast over the knight. Hits from weapons with the firestorm or beam traits may not be transferred in this way. So... A couple of banners of sacrificial knights to keep your warlord and your reavers going. Again, I can this has come out in White Dwarf, and I can see it being real popular. Knight houses. Uh, you've got Hausidus, who, according to the fluff, are all about your knight Majeras, your knight Atropos, your Mechanicum knights, and they got a big stock of those. So they got less than 10 Questoris, everything else is somewhat much cooler. And you've just got some household specific knightly qualities. So House Tyrannus, again, nice colour scheme. House Zavora, mm. white and red. Nothing too exciting. House Morbidia, that colour scheme looks really, really nice. Um, you've got one beige panel, the whole rest of it is a sort of deep red. It looks really good. So it'll look really good at that scale. House Iodin, so these a purple scheme with sort of a weird bat skull thing, which should really have been a warning sign to people, and who start off on the loyalist side in the Battle for Riser and switch. But yes, we've got Narrative battles. So let's have a quick look at. Okay, so you've got. This battle is a knight household battle. So they are continuing to push knight households. This is knights versus titans. 3000 point aside battle. No, 3,000 for Legio Volturum, 2,000 for Legio Crucius. Four thousand on one side, three thousand on for Legio Crucius on this side. So you get into some reasonably big battles. On the other hand, they're probably thinking that the people have been collecting this from the start. 4K battles are easy for them because they'll have got probably six or seven titans and probably 12 or 15 knights. And they're not wrong in many cases, are they? Because I've got two warlords, two reavers, two warhounds, and I've got 12, 
12 knights. Both players got 4,000 points in this, and this is why you can do things like play the Exterg Extergimus Maniple, because you've got those points. Allegiances. So, uh, with Allegiances, you're either a traitor, a loyalist, or a black shield. You've got some restrictions, so loyalists can only have loyalist titans. You're not allowed to have black shield legends. You're not allowed to have traitor legends. You can't have traitor or black shield stratagems. You can have sight titans, and you can have loyalist titans legend. Uh, but you get a once per game ability in the damage control phase. Single Loyalist Titan that's been successfully issued an order other than emergency repair can immediately be issued a different order other than emergency repair without needing to make a command check. So that lets you switch order part way through, but you can't do it to emergency repair, get the benefits of that, and then switch to something else. Uh, Traitor Battle Group. So you can have Traitor Titans of Legend, Corrupted Titans and Renegade Knight Banners, both of which are not covered in this book, but are going to come out another time. Um, I was expecting Corrupted Titans in this supplement. There's a lot in it. I'm a little disappointed you don't get the Corrupted Titans. So once per game during movement phase, a single Traitor Titan can add two inches to both their default and boosted speed characteristic and add one dice value to of all weapons with the melee trait. So you get plus one on your melee attacks and plus two to your movement for one Titan once per game. Okay. Uh, black Shield. Black Shields can only take Black Shields. No Psy Titans, Corrupt Titans, Renegade Knight Banners, Loyalist or Traitor Titans are Legend. You can't have any Loyalist or Traitor specific stratagems, but once per game when you fail a command check, Black Shield Titans not part of a maniple may still be issued orders which sort of pushes you towards taking individual Titans. Knight Household Allegiances, you've got four of these um, with again another um, knightly quality table. So you can use this instead of the table that you've got for your Knight Household or instead of the generic table. Uh, Questorius Imperialis limits you to Knight Household and Questorius Imperius Household stratagems. Da -da. You can get Loyalist Titans Legend as reinforcements. Can't include Corrupted Titans or Renegade Knight Banners. And you can't purchase stratagems for other um, household types. But you get an Allegiance. One Questorius Imperialist Lance of the player's choice can have plus two inches to their speed for the remainder of that phase. And that's just for movement. So these allegiance abilities, they're not huge, they're nice. And you've got to bear that in mind. And everybody gets them. You decide your army's theme. If you're Legio Mortis, you've got the Traitor Legio Allegiance ability on top of everything else. Quest of Mechanicus. Targeting solutions once per game. All banners within a single Quest of Mechanicus Lance. Can it be issued a coordinated strike, split fire, or first fire order without the need to make a command check? Each banner can be given a separate order. So you can just go all guns, open fire. But again, the same restrictions. So you pick these allegiances and it stops you picking um, Loyalist or Traitor Titans Legend or Black Shield Titans Legend or whatever. Questoris Oblitus is the Black Shield Knights. You can take Black Shield Titans Legend, you can't take the specific Imperial, you can't take the specific Traitor stuff. Once per round, Banner with, within a Questorus Oblitus Lance can take a command check to see if they become shaken, can choose to pass a, the command check instead of rolling. So that helps keep you in the battle. Traitor, uh, once per game, can add one to the dice value of a single weapon with the melee trait of their choice for the remainder of the phase. All knights in the banner are affected by the rule. Uh, all knights add one to the dice value of the weapon. So if you've got lancers and you're going in, you pick plus one to your lances. Um, if you've got the dual close combat weapon knights for the Questorus loadout, you pick your close combat weapons and suddenly you've got all those attacks get plus one. But again, you've got more knightly qualities. 
creating a Titan Legion. These are the rules from White Dwarf. They are updated though. So let's find the one everybody complained about. Elite Magos. Uh, damage control phase. Titan for this Legion can reroll a single repair dice. The second roll must be accepted even though it's even if it's worse. But yeah, you can pick four traits from this. Specific stratagems, specific equipment or legio traits, any combination of them. And that's really good and flexible. There will be some tough combinations for you to pick, but there's nothing horrific. So, um, for knights, for knight household armies, you can now buy battle standards, which give you additional rules. And you've got, actually, a fair few. You've got some, you've got three pages of them. Some specific to Traitor or Black Shield or Mechanicus or Imperialist, and some general. So this has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight general, and then one for each type. And then for this, you've got one, two, three, four, five, four for lances, and then one for each type. So it gives you a bit of flexibility in your knights. It lets you give special rules to uh, your lances. That is pretty cool. And then appendices, you've got some more stratagems and you've got some specific terrain rules for riser. And then you've probably been to Warhammer World and seen these. I've seen these, certainly. That's Legio Audax and that's the Psy Titan from the last book. So, overall, my impression of this is really good. Um, as usual, the production quality is great. Um, as usual, they put a lot of thought into this. There's stuff in this book for all Titanicus players. They continue to put out a lot of stuff for Knight Households. They know how popular Knight Households are with people. And they're putting more and more support in place people to do their own night household lists, customise them how they like and do stuff with that. But yeah, it's a really nice book. I'm really looking forward to the Night Atropos and the Night Majeras. They look great in 40k scale. I imagine they'll look just as good in epic scale. But yeah, very good book. Highly recommend it. If you're a Titanicus player, yet more great stuff. But also puts two more boxes of knights on the horizon. I was hoping that we'd start seeing the new titans by now, but it looks like it's going to be another couple of boxes of knights before then. Nah, I'm not heartbroken, but I do want some new titans at some point soon. We will see. There's a whole bunch of transfer sheets missing. We've got to have the Volcano Cannon option for the Warbringer, and now they've put new types of knight in the frame though we've not seen miniatures previewed. So yes, more exciting stuff coming out for Titanicus. It's a good, good game with a great set of stuff. There's lots more exciting stuff to come. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen some of it yet. But yeah, really looking forward to putting together my nights. Um, and I actually would highly recommend this. As ever, it's RRP 22 quid but you're paying for quality and you're getting it. So if you've liked this video, hit like and subscribe. If you want to chat, leave a comment below. But otherwise, good gaming.